What's up, Patreon family? This is Megan from the Hood Astro Queen. Welcome back to another video. I'm coming to y'all once more with yet another celebrity birth chart reading. This time on none other than Miss Lisa Lefta Lopez. I've been getting a lot of requests, this is, for this one. Highly requested reading. So we're going to go ahead and just take a look at her natal chart and, you know, point out some things that we can infer from it based on what we know to be true about her. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who Left Eye is, okay? She's one third of the group TLC, who was, I mean, larger than life in the early 90s to the early 2000s. And unfortunately, Left Eye was killed in a tragic car accident in Honduras. And I wanna say maybe April of 2002, I slightly remember it because this was the year after Aaliyah's death and I may have been like in the fourth grade during this time and I do remember a lot of people talking about it hear it uh, about her death on the news and things like that and for what it was worth I was also very fond of TLC in terms of just listening to their music or sneaking and, and listening to, <laughs> to some of their music anyway so you know, it doesn't really seem like it's been that long, but it has been a while. So let's go ahead and get into the reading. Left Eye was born May 27, 1971 at 10 a.m. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And she was born to a father who was in the military. Okay. And I remember even watching some documentaries in the past and things like that, that really spoke to how much of an influence Lisa's father had on her life. He was her best friend, which is actually very much consistent with like a lot of Gemini sons. Of course, not all, um, the way that your son would be aspected, of course would matter, but a lot of Gemini's can have a relationship with a father figure that could also, um, you know, where he could be really silly or something like that, right? And her son is in her 11th house at the Gemini degree, the fifth degree. So it just reinforces her possibly having like a really friendly relationship with her dad or him even being like very youthful and things like that. These are the parents who might play too much. But, but at the same time, it's important to note that, you know, even with him being in the military, she spoke about how strict he was. So he had a side of him where, because he was an alcoholic, which is indicated by the fact that her son is forming an opposition to her Neptune at that first degree of Sagittarius, especially in the fifth house where he would party really hard. He would throw these parties and uh, basically just drink a lot and he would do it in front of her. And he was the one who actually introduced her to the world of alcohol, right? Uh, hence that son opposition Saturn, cause that could deal with an alcoholic father, but it could also even, give a person issues when it comes to like alcoholism or substance um, abuse or addiction themselves, right? So she recalled a moment where her dad made her drink like beers or like she would like be a small child, right? Maybe 10 or something like that. And he would like watch while she drank beers. Like it would be a competition. Like they would sit there and be like, oh, who can drink the most? Like some... Y'all know 70s parents is, is different. It's given different than today's parents because like, <laughs> what the fuck? But she also specified this other side of her father that was very abusive, very belligerent, um, and even very just like strict, you know, where he ran a tight ship, specifically if he wasn't drinking or something like that, right? Where and which, I mean, when you think about Gemini in essence as a Gemini son, that makes sense as well, right? That dualistic nature. So having a father who on one end of the spectrum could be a party animal with no boundaries and then on the other end of the spectrum could flip and switch up and be something or someone completely unfamiliar to you or be a completely different way. And she does have her son conjoined to Saturn at that 27th degree of Taurus, uh, which is actually placed um, right along that 11th house cusp right there in her 10th house. So that could reinforce her father being, you know, in the military, but also him being a very rigid, domineering, controlling kind of dude, you know, conservative in many ways as well. And where he could have just really ran a tight shit. Now with Saturn, uh, trining her Pluto at that 
27th degree Virgo in her third house. This could have instilled some like positive effects on her, uh, just in terms of helping her to be someone who has like, if you've ever seen somebody who was raised by a family member that may have been in the military, they themselves could kind of carry themselves in a similar matter. So when we talk about Saturn in that 10th house, trying to Pluto in the third house of Virgo, this could be a person who could be very particular, especially when it comes to like the way that you keep things around you, your environment, right? Your daily habits and things like that. The sense of um, self-control that these people tend to have when it comes to their environment or the, the desire to have a need of control over, you know, things in terms of their environment. Now, trines, we can, it's very common that people not really activate their trines just because these are energies that come so naturally to us. And so you can see a person with this configuration kind of sleep on their own power, so to speak, or these are people who can be slackers. And it seemed that towards the end of her life, she was able to activate that trine, even in terms of like, you know, utilizing wholeness and wellness after finding Dr. CB, which is very uh, Saturn, you know, trining her Pluto in the third house of Virgo, like especially with her Saturn being in Taurus, like utilizing food and the way that you eat and changing your diet to kind of repurpose your relationship with you know, your own self-control and discipline and being able to change other areas of your life through that. Now with Lisa's son and Saturn opposing her Jupiter and Neptune in the fifth house of Sagittarius, this also reflects her having an early life environment or growing up and being reared in an environment where there was a lot of change. A lot of these people could come from family that may have been foreigners immigrants which is interesting because her last name is Lopez and it kind of can even uh, implicate there being some kind of you know different ethnic makeup going on y'all feel free to let me know in the comment section I don't know who is Hispanic or Latina I mean I know there are Afro Latinas and you know the difference between ethnicity and race and all that good stuff but somebody was Latina so I don't know feel free to let me know if it was her dad I guess it was her dad maybe but anyway, um, that could have a lot to do with that. But it also reflects her even doing a lot of moving around because at some point in her childhood, she went from living with her parents, they divorced, to living with her uh, grandmother. Okay, so moving out of town, being raised by her grandmother. And even when you think about just her traveling so much, she even moved to Atlanta at one point, right? Even though she was born in Philly and raised somewhere else. So left eye has done a lot of moving around which is very much reflected when we talk about that uh gemini sun in opposition to uh jupiter and neptune in the fifth house of sagittarius in the wikipedia article that i actually pulled up on left eye it talked about how while staying with her grandmother she actually you know got very involved in the church so she was raised in a semi-religious environment and that at some point alongside her siblings she sang gospel songs at local events and churches um, and even attended the philadelphia high school for girls which is so very much reflected in that gemini son in the 11th house being very involved in like the community and also you and your siblings being involved in said community right her son is also trining her mars in that seventh house of aquarius which could also reflect this with her gemini son sextiling her leo ascendant this could point towards her always being someone who you know may have been very popular even from a very early age with the bright personality magnetic and charming personality where she always kind of stood out from other people and, and for what it's worth she's also a leo south node and just from a karmic standpoint having her leo south node in the first house does make her someone um who in a past life she could have been a celebrity or someone who just is naturally born into this sense of uh, like i said whether it be popularity a lot of these people especially earlier on in life may stand out and be very notable figures but but considering that 
you know, her Aquarius North Node uh, at the 18th degree, by the way, too, uh, conjoined to Mars in that seventh house of Aquarius, right? It could point to where, she, in addition to that, she could also be kind of, not kind of, very infamous. <laughs> These are people who can actually resort to a lot of um, shocking behavior, engage in a lot of shocking behavior in order to get the attention that they want, especially from other people. And especially as she kind of further advanced in her career and things like that, when she would get into a lot of these like disagreements with TLC, like that part of her personality definitely became more evident, right? A lot of Leo South nodes can be very egotistical. And that's actually another huge part of a karmic lesson that I don't feel like she completely learned before she left here, but that is not really always about you, especially in the first house at that. So like being someone who kind of feels like it's my show, I run the show, right? Um, and so even when we talk about within the context of TLC, you can look at this Aquarius North Node and Mars in her seventh house as her being a part of this group, right? Where karmically, she was supposed to be someone who was able to be a lot more considerate and conscientious of the needs of others, being able to work uh, in a group, working with people and things like that. But, you know, as a Leo South Node, it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard, especially with your Leo South Node in the first house, because these people may not be the best team players. You know, they're naturally born for leadership. A lot of them could feel like they know everything or like they have all the answers or once again, could have a lot of egotistical, you know, qualities and things like that or be very defensive. And, you know, they could be the, the source of a lot of contention when it comes to even like within their friendships and things like that. And once again, t Boz and Chili have been very vocal about the fact that, I mean, even when Lisa died, they weren't really talking like that. You know, they had gone through a lot. They felt like she was othering herself, which is also actually technically even uh, the flip side to that Aquarius North Node energy. Yeah, it could be being more tolerant of others and learning how to deal with and work with others. But it does kind of set you up, especially if you lean further into their energy to be other or to be isolated or to isolate yourself from other people right? These are people who can also be very, very disagreeable, especially with that 18 energy there. And with her being born on the 27th, the number 27 uh, reduces to the number nine. So just all around, Left Eye was a very headstrong person. And you could even tell when you go back and watch her interviews, she had a very strong understanding of what she wanted, even like creatively, which is also another really big attribute of that Leo South note. These are some incredibly creative individuals. And a lot of her creativity kind of reflected that Aquarius North Node as well and Mars in the sense that she utilized a lot of her music, especially the individual music that she made on her own, like when they did like uh, a brief kind of solo thing, or I think it may have just been her, which kind of further proves my point. But she had an album called Supernova and it, encompass a lot of these like astro astronomy kind of concepts I wouldn't be surprised if she was really big into astrology and all of that is housed within that Aquarius north node where she was just so ahead of her time futuristic um somebody who could have been very very intrigued by even like cosmic sciences and things like that or you know, even just the concepts and the things that she would like, like the type of video she would make, for example, would be so futuristic and so different from what other people were doing during like the early 2000s. And this could even be reflected in the fact that she also has her son, that Gemini son, trining her Uranus. But also with her ascendant, even with her ascendant being at the fourth degree, uh, that number four is ruled by Uranus. So it could just give this person, um, especially with the ascendant in opposition to that Aquarius Mars, this very striking even look like aesthetically, like, you know, the clothes she wore and just how she carried herself, lots of colors, lots of this, lots of that. Very, very ahead of her time. Very much so. And looking back, it also makes sense when you consider how people even knew her to be, like how she even got her name. You know, Mars deals with one's name. So 
having Mars conjoined to that Aquarius North Node could deal with her having a very unique special name, her name being Left Eye. And the whole concept of her wearing the little thing under her, um, you know, eye, right? Her left eye, the little mark. I remember when I was little, I used to draw like little, you know, crayon marks or markers under my left eye. Like it was very unique. It was something that once again, these are people who have to differentiate themselves from other people. And, you know, it could be in good ways and ways that could be useful in terms of, you know, just people identifying who they are and even her personality like from my vantage point and the people I've been around most people (laughs) wanted to be her like when I used to play TLC with all my friends and stuff like that my cousins everybody would fight over who would be left eye right so that kind of thing not to say T-Boz and Chili didn't have they stands y'all drop down in the comment section let me know who was y'all's favorite okay if you play TLC with your friends and family back in the day, who was y'all? You know, I know when we was playing Destiny's Child, everybody wanted to be Beyonce. When we was playing TLC, everybody wanted to be Left Eye. So the point is, like, she definitely lived up to uh, that part of her North Node, for sure. The controversy, uh, just being really different, other kind of personality, definitely. And as we all know, this could be associated when we talk about that Aquarius, Mars and North node, you know, with, with, you know, being, being, um, sexually fluid on the, uh, LGBTQ spectrum and the fact that it's taking place in her seventh house of relationships does make me wonder if she's ever, you know, messed with the same sex, not to mention her being a Gemini son which could also be another indicator of at the very least bisexual tendencies, especially in the 11th house, which could also deal with same sex attraction. And it's forming an opposition to once again, that, that Neptune. So, I mean, that could even deal with her being that way, but may not be comfortable with it or where it could just be something where it's like, you know, she would feel like the need to cover it up, you know, hide it. There could be some shame attached to it. And some of it could be due to like religious reasons or where she could be a, she could have been a person herself who kind of was like living a double life. I wouldn't be surprised actually. I just wouldn't. At the very least, another way you can interpret this is like maybe her dealing with men or being a beard for gay men. You know, I wouldn't rule that out either, but I definitely wouldn't be surprised if she herself, um, you know, dabbled in the lady pine. Now, Taking it back to left eye being, you know, a person who could have been very disagreeable, very much other and and so on and so forth. Controversial, even with that Aquarius North Node and Mars. Her Mars is also square her Venus at that 10th degree of uh, Taurus in her 10th house, which further embodies the type of relationship that she had with her group members, especially t who also happens to be she's a Taurus son actually so technically her son would fall in left eye's 10th house which makes a lot of sense because essentially this would activate uh a lot of what's going on in terms of uh her having such a fixed midheaven with Saturn at the 27th degree uh, the 27th degree of Taurus Mercury at the 12th degree of Taurus Venus at that 10th degree of Taurus and having Venus squaring uh her Mars in Aquarius in the seventh house you know because it could just deal with where t bars on one hand wanted to conform right she wanted to do what you know was expected of them in, in terms of like the music industry which is another way you could look at that Venus in the 10th house of Taurus her you know, being literally like a, uh, someone working in the, in, in the music business. Right. And just wanting to kind of like, cause a lot, this could be reflective of someone who could be like, a, you know, these are people who could be brands, right. Which a lot of celebrities are, but where it's like, these are people who want to get the bag, right. Especially as a tourist where it was very easy for t Boss to be like, you know what, let's get this money. Let's, let's make this bag. And let's, whatever it is that they want us to do, let's do it. But where left eye was very willful, right? And that ties back into that inability to be able to kind of, um, you know, really compromise with other people 
and get along with other people with that Aquarius North Node and Mars in the seventh house where she was very willful and headstrong about doing the things that she wanted to do and that led to a lot of fallouts quite honestly um, these are people who just in general when we talk about Venus square Mars but especially that Venus in the 10th house of Taurus squaring her Mars and Aquarius in the seventh house it was very easy for her to fall out with people I mean even in her personal life this could have you know, led to some difficulty in relationships, especially romantic relationships. Lots of fighting, which we all know she's very infamous for uh, the relationship with the football player in which she burned down a nigga's house. Okay, which is actually very much reflected by her Cancer Moon squaring Chiron at that 12th degree of Aries. That's, that's a house fire all day long. Okay, that's also a person who has a very short fuse and they could really snap and disassociate from reality. And these are people who can be extremely dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. And on top of that, as a Leo South Node, once again, with, with her South Node in her first house, a part of that Leo South Node could even be having like anger issues, right? Um, these are people who can be very temperamental. They can throw, you know, temper tantrums. Uh, they can resort to violence. And things like that and a lot of these things could have been reflected or uh, could have been traits and, and things that karmically she may have inherited from her father which is another reason why she does have that leo south node lots of leo south nodes have unresolved karma unhealthy attachments tied to their fathers and and so on and so forth so you know but yes i definitely could see her being just a spitfire somebody who like when she was mad <laughs> i'm upset <laughs> that's it you know, I, I can definitely see her knocking a nigga head off his shoulders a couple times. I wouldn't be surprised if she's cut somebody before or like, you know, pulled out a weapon, especially with, you know, that uh, cancer moon in the 12th house, squaring Chiron, especially when drunk or intoxicated, which bringing it right back around to her addiction problem um, or her being an alcoholic at some point, you know, a lot of people would complain about her actions once she was inebriated and things like that. So you can look at that 12th house moon, um, in a, a bunch of different ways, but you know, just for the sake of the, <laughs> not, not taking all day with this video. Um, one of the main ways would be, you know, someone who is very much has a, like an addictive personality, right. And a lot of suppressed and repressed, um, emotions such as anger, Okay, especially with her moon square and Chiron and Aries tends to surface when she's under the influence of something, you know. So these are people who can actually even have a, almost like a daredevil kind of personality as well, which a lot of people knew her for. That was a huge part of her reputation as well. And it was also a part of that unpredictability, you know, that came from her, you know, in addition to that Aquarius, Mars and North Node and even the fact that her son is, is trining, that Gemini son trining that uh, Aquarius Mars. Now, as a Gemini, especially with her Gemini son in the 11th house and its opposition to Neptune specifically, uh, but also especially Jupiter, this could be a person who is very susceptible to, um, you know, lots of karma and karmic situations involving vehicles i mean you could even look at that too with her son conjoined to saturn i mean you know karma quite literally her uh you know gemini son conjoined to saturn but with her son forming that opposition to neptune these are people who may have gotten duis at some point but also could be subject to uh you know potentially life-threatening car accidents that could land them in the hospital which we all know once again is actually how she died. And it's really interesting too, because her son uh, in opposition to Neptune, I mean, you could look at this, especially or specifically when we talk about Gemini son in opposition to Neptune as someone who a, it could either be under the influence while driving B someone who could fall asleep behind the wheel or see someone who just may not be paying attention. And I don't know if y'all saw that video. It was like a documentary series on the last couple of weeks of her life and the last moments of her life. They literally captured and filmed 
everything up to like the last moments of her life, which is actually very reflective of that opposition between her son and Neptune. But like they literally filled, they filmed everything in the car, like the last moments right before, like you could tell right when the car accident happened because the footage got like really blurry and jumbled up and it went staticky. But um, those few moments right before the accident occurred, it just kind of seemed like she wasn't paying attention. Not to blame her for her death, because I, I mean, I, I feel like things happen the way that they're supposed to happen anyway, but it just kind of seemed like she was kind of zoning out. You know what I'm saying? Like these are people who could just like not really pay attention. They could also kind of have road rage, especially with Neptune and Jupiter in Sagittarius like that, you know? So I thought that was interesting. And with her son in opposition to Jupiter, I mean, that could literally deal with her being in a car out of the country. Cause she was in Honduras at the time of her death and literally just like, getting into an accident having to go to like a Honduran or like a, a international hospital or something like that right so yeah that that opposition that three-way opposition between her son Jupiter and uh, Neptune and Sagittarius it, it's it can speak to a lot of things something else that this opposition could speak to is her quest her search her being on this like spiritual journey especially with sun in opposition to Jupiter um, which is another reason that led her to leave the country to go to Honduras and specifically to study under and meet Dr. CB and don't don't shoot me okay Hotep family don't shoot me but you know there is some kind of question about his credibility and his validity and I'm not even gonna hold you okay we not, this is not the video that I'm making to talk about that different video for a different day but I will say you know with Lisa left eyes Jupiter conjoined to Neptune like that and with it opposing her Gemini son it could have made her someone who could have been gullible to like you know like spiritual it kind of gives like spiritual cult vibes or like um where she may have been seeking spiritual guidance but these are people who can be in danger of like losing themselves so they could be very literal very wide open to like learning the teachings and things like that of other people and, 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 you know, trying to find themselves through spirituality and that's all fine and dandy. But, you know, we start walking that like fine line between like, like I said, once again, credibility versus like, what the fuck are we doing here? Then she has Jupiter trining her ascendant, that Leo ascendant. So that could also even deal with her relationship with Dr. CB looking towards a male, right? A very popular male, very popular spiritual figure. Um, which, you know, he was very popular, especially in Hollywood circles. And to take things a step further, you know, Leo South Nose can be very, very gullible, right? Leo South Nose, even ascendants, like major Leo placements, depending on how they're aspected and whatnot. I mean, they just, they can, they can be very, very like naive, you know? Um, and the fact that her son, which is, at once again the fifth degree of Gemini in the 11th house opposing Neptune and Jupiter like that and Sagittarius it just gives the vibes of a person who could be a student to maybe a false prophet or where a person could just be wide open and naive to teachings where they're taking in all of this information all of these teachings all of this this all of this that all of this information and like eating it up in you know I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just leave that there. <laughs> These are people who could also even themselves be subject to delusions of grandeur, especially as it pertains to like, you know, self-righteousness and spirituality and religion, you know, um, had she lived long enough, I wouldn't be surprised if she wanted to be like, you know, or, or ordained herself to be, you know, some type of spiritual prophet or whatever the case may be. Um, so, you know, there's that. Now, this opposition between her son and Jupiter, uh, as well as Neptune and Sagittarius, could also deal with her adopting children, which she has. She actually never had biological children of her own. And a large part of that, I would suspect, well, actually, I know, has a lot to do, once again, with that Leo South node. Um, a lot of Leo South nodes either I mean and it could play in a few different ways because I mean there are Leo South nodes with children and even when I think about like clients and former clients that I've taken on you have the Leo South nodes who really 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 want children really really bad right 
and for whatever reason may not necessarily be able to have them, especially as, um, you know, other things in the chart could indicate uh, issues with fertility, which I mean, with her cancer moon, the moon and cancer both deal with the womb, squaring Chiron and Aries. That's a really big placement that I see or aspect that I see in the charts of women who could have fibroid problems or just issues, you know, with their lady parts and things like that. Um, you know, that could make pregnancy hard or, you know, giving, you know, carrying a child a term, it, there could be some issues there, put it like that. But then you also got the Leo South nodes who just maybe don't want children who are just really just, you know, like I rather not. Even when you consider her son can join the Saturn like that, you know, these are people who can have very, uh, karmic relationships with children, or there could be a lot of fear tied into having children of your own and things like that. But I could also even just uh, further represent maybe, you know, a person who just doesn't have, I mean, who, do, who doesn't have children and it could bring a lot of karmic and reinforces these people having a lot of karmic experiences um, to that part of their lives. But as well as like their relationships with men, you know, as a byproduct of a lot of the daddy issues that they could have. Uh, are definitely prevalent and we can we can definitely deduce that she had issues with men issues in the love and romantic department a lot of leo south no women most of them um, my bad if that happens to be you but they just they don't have really good choice in men they just don't they just don't they can have some of the hardest times in terms of love and romance and i just be like listen um listen <laughs> listen then when you add up the fact that her son is, is opposing Jupiter and Neptune that could deal with her dealing with athletes who, you know, very similar to that, that famous relationship she was in, right? Men who could be even in the entertainment industry with that fifth house energy, but they could be whores, uh, liars, cheaters. Um, maybe she done dated a couple convicts before in the past. Once again, Venus squaring Mars like that and Aquarius. You know, I mean, that's somebody who could engage in a lot of hookups, but when it comes to like having steady, consistent, ongoing relationships, even friendships, once again, I could find, I could see where that could be, uh, something that may have been very hard for her. Betrayal was something that she could have definitely been capable of. Um, you know, just like disloyalty and things like that, which once again, tying it back to some of the stories that I've heard in regards to TLC and things there was a, a brief era where she disagreed or she just straight up bowed out of doing any group projects and instead signed a death row and wanted other people to do this so you know these are people who you know can be selfish and inconsiderate and when you think about it that is also further playing into that leo south node uh karma especially with it being in her first house you know looking out for self and things like that now on the positive end um, you know, it made her, like I said, a, a great leader and somebody who, you know, um, kind of, you know, stood out for a lot of the decisions that they made, but it may not have always been, you know, she, she may not have always utilized the best ends to meet the means. If that makes sense. If I said that correctly, even when it came to left eyes relationship with the media, you know, a lot of people just viewed her to be a trickster a prankster I think before she died there was a rumor she actually started a rumor about her own death and so when she did die for a good little minute it took a lot of people like a while to believe it because people were so skeptical based on her previous antics that could also be associated with her um you know Gemini sun in opposition to Jupiter and Neptune like you know like her lying to the media or you know playing jokes on the media her Aquarius Mars is also squaring her Mercury uh, in that 10th house of uh, Taurus, which could also even further reinforce this really, once again, like controversial relationship she had with the media, making a spectacle of herself and whatnot. But that could also even further reinforce her being very like, um, you know, single minded at times or, you know, somebody who could have been very argumentative. Uh, you know, defensive, and that could also make it really hard to get along with the person in the group too. She, you know, even though she, of course, had a lot of like really good endearing qualities that made her somebody who
school may have been a lot of fun to be around and even really charitable and giving um, and sweet in a lot of ways because she does have that 12th house cancer moon that can be really sweet you know very much empath like material so that's great um, she was also somebody who was just really hard to deal with I, I, I can see that by looking at her chart too but therein lies the conundrum of that Gemini Sun honey that dual nature all famous Geminis that I've ever known of um, have it, you know, even Tupac, which is very interesting. She has a lot of the same placements as Tupac. And she even remembered, like, I remember, you know, her talking about where she was recalling meeting Tupac and feeling like they had like such a close connection. They're both Leo South nodes. They're both uh, Gemini sons. And they just kind of had that, that way about them uh, from the charisma to the performative, you know, uh, ways being very theatrical, doing the most, being very uh, contra uh, controversial figures at times, all of that. And I wouldn't even be surprised if she would have got into like movies, right? Acting at some point, especially uh, once again, being that Gemini South Node, or excuse me, that Leo South Node, had she lived long enough. Um, but even when we think about Kanye West and Azalea Banks, you name it, Gemini's are just really good for housing that double personality thing that they have going on, that dual persona. And then finally, because this video is getting lengthy, um, I want to wrap it up by pointing some more indicators um, in regards to uh, that tragic accident. Because, you know, in addition to the Sun, Neptune and Jupiter opposition, she does have Uranus in the uh, third house of Libra, which in and of itself can set a person up for, you know, motor vehicle accidents. And that Uranus is forming in opposition to her Chiron in the ninth house of uh, Aries, which is responsible for the injury that ultimately ended up taking her life after they were struck or after they struck the oncoming vehicle, she actually flew through the windshield, okay? And when she flew through the windshield, she landed outside of the car. She was the only one projected into the air like that and ultimately ended up messing up or, or fracturing, like I think it was like the base of her skull. It was a head injury, right? It was a blunt force trauma to the head which is so reflective of that Chiron and Aries, um, you know, placement, right? But more so with, with its opposition to Uranus in the third house. So literally like a car accident where you could end up fucking up your head or having a face or head injury or something like that. Maybe even if, if in an alternate universe has she survived, maybe her back would have been really fucked up or something like that. She could have crushed her lower back. Um, with Uranus being in Libra like that and with cancer um, dealing with the conditions near the end of life right even the moon can um, I thought it was very interesting that Chiron was also squaring that moon because once again it could just be re very reflective of someone um, succumbing to a head injury and I know I said this is the last point but before I go some other points that I wanted to uh, make, right, just that were interesting observations. Uh, this Taurus stellium could also, specifically with her Venus, conjoined to Mercury in Taurus in that 10th house, uh, often results in people playing instruments. Like I see that in a lot of people who can be talented when it comes to instrumentation. And I read somewhere that she did play instruments when she was younger. So that's very much Venus conjoined to Mercury in uh, Taurus, right? Being in grades K through 12 or being a child and playing instruments, playing instruments with your siblings and things like that. I think they said she played the piano, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all feel free to uh, correct me. But yeah, Mercury deals with the hand. So that was very, very interesting. But also, okay, this Taurus stellium is very symbolic of the financial issues that she experienced the infamous uh you know breakdown when she was doing the breakdown of how much she and tlc got paid versus how much you know they were paying everyone else she was like take your calculators out and get ready to do the math and they ended up filing for bankruptcy because they signed a shitty ass deal 
with Pebbles and LaFace and all those other shady characters, which is another manifestation of her Saturn in opposition to Neptune like that, right? You can look at that as like a bad business deal. That opposition between Chiron and her Uranus uh, in the third house of Libra could even deal with there being some sort of litigation. Um, and I think they did take them to court. Once again, y'all feel free to fact check me in the comment section. But this could also even deal with her having to go to the courts or uh, getting in trouble, uh, you know, as a result of the fire situation. She also not only was incarcerated after the incident, which is very stunned in opposition to Neptune, but she also spent some time in rehab, which could also be indicated with sun uh, in opposition to Neptune as well as that 12th house moon. Now with her Venus forming a sixthly square to Pluto in the third house of Virgo that could deal with her filing for bankruptcy. Um, Venus is also uh, forming a quincunx to that Uranus in the third house of Libra. So once again, all these things could very much be reflective of, you know, her having money problems trying to get her money back and having to resort to like, you know, whether it be hiring a lawyer or, you know, combing through contracts and things like that. So, and then finally, you know, I remember Left Eye for being, and the reason why I loved her, not because she was the best like rapper I've ever heard. I'm a, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with y'all. When I'll be listening to some of her music now, like, okay, don't go chasing waterfalls. I seen a rainbow yesterday. Like, it, it it was cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if she really wrote that, which kind of brings me to the point of her Gemini sun in opposition to Jupiter and Neptune, especially with Jupiter dealing with publishing and her Gemini sun uh, opposing Neptune could deal with where she could have, you know what I'm saying, had somebody write the shit for her or where there could have been some plagiarizing involved. Um, honestly, she was just, it was the persona. It was the persona, which is also a very Leo South note, right? Acting, um, uh, even with her son in opposition to Neptune like that, like acting the part, right? Fake it till you make it. I am the personality, the, the actress, I'm, I'm the rapper. And I do think she had a lot of creative abilities, obviously, especially as a Leo South note, um, and ascendant, but I just, I don't, I don't think that was all her. Um, and even if it was, like I said, I, I just wasn't impressed. Um, I, she just wasn't the best in that regard, but you know, that's okay. Okay. Tupac, who was another fellow Gemini son, Leo South note, all he did was rhyme Hennessy envy me with enemies, Hennessy envy me, Hennessy, but, but we still hold him in a higher regard than a lot of other technical lyricists just because the world fell in love and was captivated by that personality, by his persona, by, you know what I'm saying? The character that he played. Um, and, and that's just really what it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and end on that note. Y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this whole situation. Um, you know, left eyes chart, anything that you want to, you know, add about her as an artist or how much you liked her or TLC. And yeah, I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Bye.